hello friends welcome back to my channel and into my home so I often get asked how I jump back into routines after I've been away on vacation so we're going to talk about that today I also want to talk about my enthusiasm for routines to keep my house tidy even though I don't enjoy the process of cleaning so in today's video we're going to be zone cleaning my living room and my dining room and we're going to follow my seven simple steps that's going to have us cleaning everything from the ceiling down to the floor and if you don't already have my weekly zone cleaning schedule, go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll get that off to you. Okay, let's start cleaning. Okay, so I'm gonna start by throwing the covers to the dog beds into the wash. Now I have three dog beds here because I have a grand dog that stays with me on occasion. So one of these beds belongs to her. And then that round fluffy one, that one should be in our room so that way all of Grace will stop laying on my good pillows. Now the round bed, that is not a cover on there. I have to throw that whole thing into the washing machine. So you'll see me doing that here in just a second. Okay, so my mama was right. White is rarely a flattering color to wear. Anyway, so when I get back from vacation, I jump back into my zone cleaning. Now typically I'll start back where I left off. However, if like in today's case, I have a space that is in desperate need, then I'll start there. So I'm starting in my living room and my dining room because these are the areas that collect the most fur from the pets when I'm gone. And a week of um, not vacuuming has this zone a mess. So when I zone clean a room, I like to start from the ceiling and I work down to the floor with the exception of the living room. Under this couch is a copious amount of fur, and the only way for me to easily get this out from underneath here is I have to blow it out. So, you would want to go ahead and do this first before attempting to dust the rest of the room. And for this job, I bought the mini Ryobi blower. The reason why I'm blowing it out instead of just tipping the couch backwards is that the couch is very, very heavy and it's cumbersome to tip over. Now we do do that maybe every six months, we will um, tip it over and we will mop underneath there. But, um, you know, when I do my zone cleaning, I like to just get under here and blow everything out. It's just so much easier. Okay, so it is um, shedding season for my cat. And every so often I have to get under here because it will be full of fur from her. Look at that. Fur and feathers. Feathers are from my pillows. It doesn't matter how many times a day I vacuum, I still end up with so much fur all over my house. If you have pets, do you have this problem? I really feel like I'm just alone here. Switch attachments. Let's try this one. All right, let's see what I can get out with this attachment. Whatever's left is pretty stuck in there, so I'll have to use this. So I'll never be able to get it perfect, but this is much better than it was, right? This is the seat that goes back. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, yeah. Look at this corner here. Yeah, definitely disgusting. All right, I'm gonna get in here. And I'm gonna vacuum it, and then we'll probably have to use the roller in here too.
Okay, so the vacuum died on me, so I'm going to go ahead and resort to this. Now, I'm beginning to wonder if I'm even a fan of the cordless vacuum. I know that it, you know, it's nice to not have the cord, but it does have other limitations to it. And I'm finding that the battery's not lasting me as long. And it's a relatively new vacuum, so that's kind of upsetting. But, I don't know. I might need to look into a, a good corded vacuum. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start up here at the ceiling. And we'll go ahead and use my docker pole. We're going to swipe down all the cobwebs. Then I'll do the fans and the air vents and the lights. All right, so let's chat about why I started my YouTube channel. Now, by all appearances, I must be one who really enjoys to clean, right? I mean, I have a cleaning channel, so that would make sense. But honestly, I don't really enjoy the process of cleaning. I just really, really love the feeling of having a clean home. Now, when I was a young mother, I did have a lot of perfectionistic tendencies borderlining on OCD. I had ritualistic type cleaning that was oftentimes disruptive to my life. Now, I talk about this in this video here. If you want to find out how I overcame perfectionism, I'll link this video at the end of this video. Now, when I was in my busy years of motherhood, I learned about the Fly Lady system. And over the years, I have broken down that system to better work with my lifestyle and also with my perfectionistic personality. Now, we oftentimes hear people joking about perfectionists, and we imagine that our perfectionist friends are living in very calm, clean homes, when in reality, perfectionists quickly shut down. If we feel like we're taken over by too much, we will shut right down. And in this shutting down state, things can quickly get out of hand. So I learned early on that it's best for me, especially while I was raising uh, my kids, it was best if I go ahead and I break down my chores into daily, weekly, and monthly routines. It's only been within the last five years that I further broke down the system and I developed my seven step zone cleaning. Now, if you follow the Fly Lady system, you know that she has an extensive list of tasks for each room in your home. But in my opinion, this can become very overwhelming. And for a perfectionist, it can push her further into perfectionism and the ritualistic cleaning that I was talking about. So I broke down the tasks into zones of the room. So starting from the ceiling and ending down at the floor. And then the way that I maintain these areas um, in between zone cleaning is that I implemented the morning and evening routines. Of course, these routines look much different than when I was a young mom raising children than what it does now that I'm an empty nester with at least one or two grandkids in my home in any given day. So the reason that I started my channel is that I wanted to encourage other women, and I mean all types of women, young women starting out in her first home, women mothering children, single working women, divorced working women, and empty nesters. I've been all these women at one time or another, and I have a passion to encourage all women to set up routines to help you streamline your life. So as you know, I have three daughters. Each daughter has very different personalities, um, and they're also in different stages in their life. My oldest daughter, she works outside the home. She has three children ranging from 14 down to one years old. Her routines look completely different than my middle daughter who works inside the home. So she's a work at home mom and she has two little boys and one will be homeschooling this year. And then there's my youngest daughter. She's my ADHD daughter. Um, she uses routines to help keep her on task because without those routines, um, things would get overlooked in her busy life. She also has two young daughters and a bonus daughter who visits um, every other weekend. So as you can see, between the four women in our family, including myself, we all, we all have very different personalities, but we build routines to work for our homes and our lifestyle. So I started this channel to encourage you to build routines for yourself. Now I have a playlist if you're interested in getting started, and I will link that playlist at the end of this video. Now, if you're new here, I hope that you'll click on that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you get reminded every time I post a new video.
So before I do the top of the entertainment center, I like to go ahead and get everything off of top of that because it's all going to fall down on this entertainment center. And then I also like to come over and do um, the loose dust off of this. Now anything that's left over, I will use that um, sticky roller thing to get the rest of this off. But this just gets everywhere, so I like to be sure to get all this done before I go and dust off the top of the cabinet. I'm sure that makes sense, right? So one of my sweet new subscribers asked me if I could do a question and answer type video. So I will be happy to do that. If you have any questions that you would like to ask me, could you leave it down in the comment box or feel free to email it or if you'd like to send it to me in a message over in Instagram, I will get the, the list together and then I will come up with my answers and we'll do it in one of the videos coming up soon. When I wet dust, I like to use the Method Daily Wood Cleaner, and I also use a microfiber towel. This stuff smells so good. So you may wonder why I feather dust before I come in and I use the wet dust. Well, the reason is, is because if you spray this on um, fur and stuff that's on top of here, sometimes it'll make it stick and it, it's just more difficult to get rid of it. So the feather duster or the Swiffer, particularly the Swiffer, will um, catch a lot of those, um, the fur and the dust and all that, catch it in its fibers before I come and I wet it with this. So that's the reason why I do that. Honestly, I live in the land of the fur and I can't ever seem to get away from it. I'm wondering if one of those HEPA system um, filtration systems would help. Um, maybe something that I can set up in this room because this room really gets a lot of fur, as you can see. Now I'll come back over this with the roller and get the little fur that's left in this. While I was getting the roller, I also got this to show you. Because occasionally I'll use this because it also really um, picks up the hair, catches the hair, and they're also very large. Just a nice large piece and it really catches the the fur. I'll show you that here in just a second. And we'll go ahead and do this, get whatever little pieces of fur is left on that, and then we'll work on the front of the speakers. Now, I have a daily and a weekly um, routine that helps me to keep this area maintained. So now that I've zone cleaned it, now I need to maintain it. Now, the reason why I have so much fur this time is because it hasn't been maintained in two weeks. First of all, we were out on vacation for one full week when we went to Alaska, and then we came back and we had 4th of July. And this right here is the, that I'm filming this is the day after 4th of July. So those sliders have been opened. The, um, you know, the wind came in. I also had three dogs here on 4th of July. And then of course our cat. So there's a lot of extra fur because of the extra two dogs, plus the um, 
you know, not get into these areas for two weeks now. So typically I have to vacuum twice a day. Now I will vacuum my rugs in the morning and at night I run the Roomba. This is the way that I keep up with all the fur. But if I'm gone for a week, I can't run the Roomba because it doesn't um, empty itself. So it's full in, you know, one, one day, so. going to use this and pick up some of this fur before I come in and use the wet cleaner. Here's my sweet Peyton from Alaska. This is about four years ago, so she was just a sweet little thing. She came here to visit her Grammy right before we moved into this house. This picture was taken in my other house. And the next day we were moving into this house. And she is a sweet little thing. twins Mac and Sam, Chris and little Ben. All right, now that's all done. We'll just move on to the next one. One of the challenges of having a blended family is um, photos and whose photos go where. Now I try to have all the grandkids displayed in this, um, in this TV stand. But throughout my home, you don't see a lot of photos because if I put photos of every single one of our grandkids all throughout the house, uh, that would be a lot of photos, plus all of our kids. So what I like to do is just change out photos underneath here as the kids grow. At least that's my plan. I do have some empty frames here that I need to fill up with photos. Now this is something else that I don't like move everything to clean this because I don't want to disturb any of the cords and how my husband has it. I'm always afraid that I'm going to push buttons that I shouldn't be pushing. So I try to clean up as much as I can and then whatever really needs a deep cleaning, I will remind him to do. I also don't wet spray in here. Because again, it's you know it's got all these electronics and 
I don't want to be responsible for anything getting ruined, so. But you know how tempting it is not to pick these things up? Very tempting. Okay, that's as far as I'm going. Okay, I just noticed as I'm looking up there that there is some fur right underneath the TV. So I'm gonna get under there and get that. So another thing that I get asked about my zone cleaning checklist is if I do all seven tasks every time I zone clean in that space. And my answer is, is that it depends on the space. But like on this list for today is to clean the windows. Now you'll see that I do clean the sliders and I'll also clean the bottom windows here in the dining room. But the last time I was in this zone, which was about six weeks ago, I cleaned the top windows. And I also cleaned the top windows there that's above the buffet. So I really don't think that those need to be cleaned this go around. So I do weigh out what I think really needs to be done. And I always try to take care of the things that might get worse. Um, something that if I don't take care of it now, it will, it'll get worse. Kind of like the microwave or deep cleaning the shower. So my goal with the seven tasks is to have an idea of what needs to be done and then I have the option of assessing whether I need to do it this go around or if it can wait for the next go around. I really just wanna have a clean and tidy home without spending hours doing it. So another question that I get is if I do all seven tasks in one day. And typically, yes, I do, but it hasn't always been that way, um, which led me to the seven tasks in the first place because I would do one task every day in that zone which really helped when I was a single mom working outside the home. That way I could just add one task to either my morning or my evening routine. But at this time in my life, it's easier for me to tackle the whole zone in one day, which typically only takes me about an hour or an hour and a half to do, um, depending on the size of the room. Now the kitchen, that's a whole different story. And if you have the weekly cleaning schedule, you can see that there's um, added tasks on there. So I break the kitchen down into two weeks in order to complete everything that needs to be done in there. Now, I hope that this makes sense. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment box. All right, so I'm about to go clean the sliders, but what I'm gonna show you first is how I clean the outside of the sliders along with the ingredients um, of the cleaner that I'm using. Now, this footage that I'm gonna be showing you was taken the early morning of 4th of July. So, uh, we had a 4th of July party here, and I woke up early in the morning so that I can clean the outside of the sliders. So you're gonna see me in my jammies and everything. You're gonna put a whole lot of this in there. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a good slip. You put your hands in here and if you feel it slippery, then you have enough. So you wanna get a good slip, not necessarily a bunch of bubbles. Just kind of mix it around. 
Yeah, now I've got a good slip on there and I'll be able to clean the windows. Then I also use a microfiber cloth and a squeegee. Okay, so what I do is I use the solution to thoroughly saturate my microfiber cloth. And then I wipe the solution onto a section of the window. Now I only do half of the window at a time. So that way it doesn't dry before I have a chance to squeegee it off. Now I have a towel that I wipe the squeegee off with in between swipes. This eliminates that water stripe that oftentimes happens. So then I'm working my way down and you'll see me go and wipe a line that sometimes forms in the middle where the first pass ended and the new one begins. But that only takes a second to do. But you also see that I wipe down the bottom of the frame because obviously the soap is going to drip down. So I like to wipe it off the frame the best that I can. So while I was filming this, I was thinking about a time that my dad came to visit me and my kids. My, my kids were much younger than what they are now. Anyways, um, I think Blake was maybe in the 10th grade. Anyways, my dad owned a very large janitor service in a major city in Texas. And he tried to develop a business plan for my son to start cleaning windows at a local restaurant. <laughs> he gave him the mathematical formula of how many windows to how much to charge to how much product, you know, all the things. Anyways, it all sounded really good until my dad mentioned that it would require Blake to wake up early so that he could start cleaning these windows around 5 a.m. Well, that was a big no for Blake. <laughs> but it is a funny story and it's one that I cherish now, especially since my father has passed. Anyways, I do remember growing up and my father would tell me to pay close attention to the glass doors at restaurants. If they can't manage to keep the doors clean, then imagine what that kitchen looks like. I'll always remember that. And I think about it every time I walk into a restaurant and I see dirty windows. Okay, so now we're back to today and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean the inside of the windows. Now I'm only going to do the bottom of the windows because like I said the last time I, that I did zone cleaning I did the tops of the windows and um, also those little windows that are above the buffet. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do the bottom of the windows. Now I typically have to do these windows quite often because I have little handprints that are always on these windows. So in order to keep them clean and nice, I need to do them quite often. But I'm gonna go ahead and do them today because like I said, we had 4th of July here yesterday and there were lots of little handprints all over the windows. And you can also see the um, table that's set up out there with the juices. Um, all that was for 4th of July. We still need to bring all that in.
Okay, so my Dyson is charged back up. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get as much of this fur out of here as I possibly can. All right, so Madeline loaned me her upright vacuum so that I can finish up this job. And then Michael went ahead and he ordered a new battery for our Dyson. So we'll see how well the Dyson works once the new battery comes in. Okay, so it's all coming back to me now. You know, the old Celine Dion song. Anyways, um, it's all coming back to me because I remember now why I don't like these upright vacuums. They kill my back. Okay, so now we know that I really need to get my Dyson working because uh, this heavy thing is a no for me.
All right, so I'm gonna use my e-cloth mop and in my um, bottle there, I have distilled vinegar, water, and a little bit of Dawn um, dishwashing soap. Now I'd like to have the um, spray bottle with me because I like to really have the floor nice and wet when I wipe it down. Now typically you only need to use water with the um, e-cloth. However, if you notice my floor doesn't have a lot of shine to it, um, it's more of a matte tile. So it tends to um, dry out the mop a lot quicker. So I go ahead and I just have that bottle with me, especially if I'm gonna do um, really large jobs like this. I'm sure you can tell that it's time for me to organize the kids' um, toys again. Now again, we had the grandkids here for the party, so a lot of the toys are out and um, not put back in the right spots. But also, if you look at my kitchen, it's a disaster area. So after I finish cleaning here, I'm gonna need to tackle that kitchen. All right, so the dryer's done. And I've already um, put this on self-cleaning. I'd like to run a good cycle of bleach through there, so that way, and you know, it just cleans out any of the germs from the dogs. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff out. Olive Grace is gonna be so happy to have her bed back. If you notice, she's been following me around because she's wondering when I'm gonna get her bed ready for her. So you'll see here in a minute, she's gonna get super excited when I have her beds done for her. You know what, I think this one goes on the other. The torn up pillow, I think goes on this one. Let's see. I always forget. You know what, I think it's time just to get rid of this. I can barely even get it back in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one out. We'll see about this. I don't know if I can maybe pass it on to somebody. We'll see. Okay, friends, while I continue to put on all of Grace's um, covers back on her bed, I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, would you please give me an orange heart down in the comments? I want to personally thank you. And don't forget to click on one of the two videos at the end of this video. Doing so really helps to support my channel. Now, I'll see you again in next Sunday's video. Until then, stay blessed, my friends. What do you think, girl? Does it smell so good? How you like it? You like it? Is it so good? Yeah, Mama did that just for you. Yes, I did.